Stanley stood for a long time in one spot. It's part of a game. He likes to see how long he can go without dying. So far, he's doing excellent. And if he just stays right where he is, I'm sure he'll keep up that good momentum. Let's observe the genius at work. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So. He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Uh, what? What? Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, Whoa. and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? <laughs> now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine.
I am okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. My I name have is a Stanley. boss. I have an office. I, have I am boss. real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must I'm be. Can I'm anyone not, hear my voice? I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I'm real. And everything went black. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. A woman? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. What? And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What? Ah, uh, what? Oh, God. Uh, all right, people. Uh <coughs> Going down the stairs again didn't change anything. They just put through the same scene of the woman. Um. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley what decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, no matter off. how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, huh? no, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. What's through here? How do we get through here? Where are we? I don't, I don't know where we are. Ah, I'm not going in there. I want to I wanna find... Is there a way to... How do we get in there? Something down there. Oh, never mind. What we'll do is we'll choose the escape tunnel instead of the mind control one. So we'll go in these doors again. Yeah. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Wanna Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. 
but his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known Damn this. It. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. All right. Going down again. What happened? Why is it loading again? Did I break it? Oh! <laughs> Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Ah, uh, nope. Nope. I'm escaping. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see that. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. <laughs> what? Tally ho! Whatever. Uh oh. What? Hello? As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, <laughs> he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. My life has been of no consequence. Stanley the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Ah, oh, it's been nice knowing everyone. Uh. Farewell, what? Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. What? What? All is not as it seems. That's Stanley Bible. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Yes. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? So we come out of our office. There's our little the office, the people that work at the office. And then we go here. And those are the... Then we go out here. The two doors. So here is the, the left one or the right one. The set of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable design. Once the room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction this room posed. I see, I see. So once, once we choose these two doors, everything else goes off the corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. The corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches two doors in good time. Office layout. Nature paint. <laughs> what is going on? 
Is this my desk? Yep. Office computers. Uh oh. Solitaire? Credits. It's down at Bible credits. Awesome. Awesome. Button signs. The selection of signs used through the game when buttons are pressed. <laughs> oh my, what's going on? Uh, this door? The office. Maintenance room. There's two doors. What of the other side? The point of the Stanley Parable HD Remix is to win. Win what? These are screenshots of the Stanley Parable HD Remix. More endings, fewer endings. More narrators, fewer narrators. More Stanley, less Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> green light. In the time that we submitted the Stanley Parable, the green light valve for the food game, the green light. I don't know, a series of food, 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 I'm sending it now. Well, where you are, and then right up. We realize how loud the sign is above. It's far too jokey, and the nose on the nose for the turn of the game. Please, some people in heaven is making fun of people. We like it. It's not our intention. That was the game. Oh. The reader's emails. From Montgomery Jones, the lights. Why do the lights. Look. As a, there's a skeleton inside you. There's more skeletons in this world than humans. Thanks for the bye. What? I don't even know what that means. The lounge, an early version of the lounge. The office. What was that? The cargo lift. The what? One option. One option. Lounge. Disobey. There's a there's a vent in the lounge. Depending on how you entered, two doors in the maintenance. The following the floor of hallways, following the first two doors was important to get right since players will replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but only it was the simple version that one night. The meeting room.
sand in lavers. These levers are already part of the living well, render with describable color. I'm so lost right now. Feelers, you're on our first new feeler. I'm so lost. The game is now paused. Begin again. Yeah. Countdown desk. Freedom ending. Yeah, the freedom ending is good. I like that one. The Stanley Parables. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in November 2011. The second, 2012, the third, 2013. Right? <laughs> right. Oh, it's just something there. Eh? Okay. I think we've been everywhere. Yeah. On this side, anyway. There was another side. Remember? Like there was a... Kevin Bright in the voice of the narrator recorded that log for the entire game roughly three several times over the two years in development. These are cuts from the earlier. Stanley stood on the roof. Uh, how do we get out of here? Remember, like there was two options. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 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 Okay. We already we came out the opposite end. Would you believe it? Let's just go. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? Hmm. No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Well, well, we talk Listen about to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. We got squished. Oh well. Look, that 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 part. Oh, this game confuses my mind because there's no there's no real continuity of it. It's just what did the game? <laughs> I ah ha ha. The game is now paused. Resume the game. Uh, quit the menu? <laughs> oh, guys. Um, yep. It's one of them. 
Uh, okay, well, that was some other endings to the game. I don't know. I, there must be a lot more to discover. In it, or something. Nice little experiment, I think. But uh, yeah, that's going to do for part two. Uh, part three will be coming up soon. I don't know how much more I'll do with this. <laughs> it's uh, perplexing. I like I like things with a running theme to it. <laughs> this is like more just like little little pieces of new things. But yeah, I'll take you in the next one if there is one. Um, but peace out for this one, guys. Bye.